Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be discussing loops. Now what if you have a pre piece of code that you would like to have executed multiple times? Well you don't want to just copy and paste it over and over again for multiple reasons. One, that's going to be more work for you, the programmer, and second of all, that's going to make your file size larger, which in turn means your application will be slower and bigger. And well, your users are not going to like that, especially in the long run when your application is much bigger and you just copy and paste things everywhere. Yeah. So let's figure out how to create a loop. So first of all, let's... Mm, what should we do? Uh, create a, a string called input. And, well, in order to use strings, we're going to have to import our string class. There we go. So we have a string called input and we'll have a message pop up that says type something in not too creative but when am I ever creative uh, CN input so they'll type in their input okay so what we have here so far is a declaration of a string variable uh, a message will pop up saying type something in and the user will be prompted to do so and let's have it print a bunch of times shall we so there's three different kind of loops that we can deal with. And the first one will be the while loop. So how does the while loop work? Well, first of all, let's type it in. First we'll type out while, then in, then uh, your expression parentheses, then an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And basically what happens is as long as the expression that's within these parentheses is true, so it has to return a boolean value of true, just like with if statements and the switch statement and whatnot, to execute this following piece of code. So we're basically going to need a variable to check with, right? And that will make sense. I know it probably makes no sense what I just said, but uh, give me a moment to explain. So first of all, let's create an integer. Let's call it i and set it equal to 0. And then inside here, we could say, while i is less than 10, do something in here. So let's print out our input, whatever we typed in. And let's throw an N line so it keeps going on to the next line. And is that it? No, no. The reason why this isn't it is we set I equal to zero, but notice how, well, isn't I always going to be zero? Yes, and that will form an infinite loop. So you don't want to do that because then, whoa, you don't want to even know the results. Uh, so we're going to have to throw out an I plus plus. And what that will do is increment our i up by 1. Remember that plus plus uh, increment operator is the same as plus equals 1 assignment operator. So it's the same thing. So I'll just throw plus plus. So I'll click save and let's run this. I'll, I'll type in, I don't know, up. And there we go. Now we get 10 ups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I feel like I'm playing like a Super Mario Brothers or something. You know, I got a one up. <laughs> okay, that was bad. That was bad. Okay, so okay, so I printed ten times. Now, why is this? We said about well, i is less than ten, so shouldn't it have only done it nine times? Theoretically, but that's only if we set i to one. But instead, we had i start at zero, so I did it when it was zero. So I did it when it was a uh, zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then once it checked to see if i was ten. Well, 10 is not less than 10, so that, retur uh, that returned false, so it did not execute the code, so it went on to the rest, which is nothing. So, that's it with that, but you don't have to use I++. Notice that you can also use I++ equals 3 for an example, so let's see how that'll work if we did that. Uh, there we go. So I'll throw an up, and now we only get 4 ups, and that's because it executed the code when I was 0, so when it was 0, three six and nine so pretty straightforward so that's was that all I want really wanted to show with that one yeah I guess so let's move on to the next one I want to show you and that's the do while loop so basically the all the difference is is we're gonna cut this and type the do in first and then our expression goes afterwards now this oh and a semicolon now this this is this guy is a black sheep among the loops for two reasons. First of all, the only difference between the while loop and the do while loop 
is it will always execute what's inside at least once, regardless of the expression is true or not. And that's because the computer is reading your uh, is reading through the code like a human being would typically from top to bottom. So as it's reading, it gets to this do right here, and it's like do. All right, I'll do whatever's after that, and it does whatever's after that. It does what it's told. Then it sees the while. So it doesn't even know this exists while it's going through this. So bear that in mind. So if, even if this is false the first time, it will still execute. So that's one difference. And the other important factor is you need a semicolon at the end. Now this is weird. Neither does the next loop that I'll be showing you, nor the while loop, have a you know a semicolon you know like right there or something. No, no. So so remember the semicolon here. So that's kind of weird, but let's see if it gives the proper error. Okay, so underline return and it said expected a semicolon. Okay, so it'll tell you in in case you forget. So that's good. Well, if you're using Visual Studio at least. Okay, so let's check this out. So this should actually work exactly the same. So I'll throw up. Okay, so that worked. Well, this time let's switch this so i is greater than 10. Well, i is never greater than 10 because it starts at 0, so it should never execute, right? But as you can see, it's still executed once, and that's the difference between the do and the while. So if I actually put this back into being a normal while, I can uh, show you that it won't work at all with the regular while loop. So if I do it this way, let's see if it even works at all this way with a regular while loop. I type in up, and this time, see, it didn't work at all. So that's the difference between the, the do while and the while. So the do while will always execute at least once. Then the last one I wanted to show you was the for loop. So we're going to have to scratch all this with the for loop. I love the for loop. It's my favorite. It's what I usually use. But it's also the most complicated to remember. It really is. It's not my opinion. It's definitely fact. It's the most complicated to remember. But it's not hard. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. All you have to do is type out for, your parentheses again, and then the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. Then three different pieces of information will go in here. First will be the declaration of your increment variable. So I'll type out int i is equal to whatever you would like. So I'll just call it in zero. Then in between each of your pieces of information will go a semicolon. And then the next will go your expression. So you could say while well, i is less than, let's say less than five this time. Then another semicolon, and then your increment. So you could go i plus equals two. Let's do that this time. And let's print something out. So see out. Let's see out the input. Uh, I believe that should all work out. There we go. Let's check this out. So I'll run this. So I'll throw out down. And now we get three downs. And that's because it went into our loop with i equals zero. And then while i was less than five, execute this. So it went in when it was zero, then when it was two, and then when it was four. And the next time, the fourth time, it saw that it went up two again to six. And six is not less than five, so it couldn't execute again. So it only did it three times. So there's a for loop. Now I'd like to show you some little cool things that you can do with this because this is a very basic, you know, just setting i less than something. And remember, a loop doesn't have to be this. It could be like while it's equal to something, while it's not equal to something. You know, there's all sorts of things you could do, but I'm just going to go just a little different and I'm going to have another output come out. And let's have it say how many times to print a question mark and we'll type in something so we'll have an int and I don't know um, number that's a pretty vague name for a variable I guess you shouldn't do that but and then we'll have to type in the number so it will ask us how many times to print whatever we typed up here and we'll put in a number and then we could say well i is less than than this number because since i is starting at zero it will always execute whatever number of times is here because for example here if we only incremented it once which is what we're going to need to do it will still do five times because we didn't start at one we started at zero so or you know what you could actually start it at one and say it's less than or equal to and it will do the same thing but instead of five we want to put in number so I click save and now let's run this 
type something in, alpha and my name in all caps. How many times to print? I'll put in six. And let's see how many times it printed. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that worked. Well, let's do this even easy. This uh, make it even easier. I had to count how many atoms were on there. So let's take this a step further. How could we put a variable here, or a number here, to represent what number of this variable went up? You know what? It's kind of hard for me to explain. Let me put this back up here. So I type out atom, and how many times to print? Let's say four. Now, what if I want an actual number to appear right here, like one, two, three, four, right next to atom, so I don't have to actually count them? Well, did you notice, as this keeps um, going through the loop, i keeps incrementing up by one, so we could actually use i as a variable in here. So first of all, let me add a space there, so it looks nicer. So I could throw an i right here, and then throw in an extra st empty string here. Now let's see what happens here. Now the i will print each time. I'll click save, and then I'll run this. So type something in, Adam. How many times to print? I'll say seven. And there we go. Now we get the i is printed each time, so you can actually follow it. Now if you didn't start i equal to one like I did, it will actually start at zero, as you could have guessed. So also bear that in mind. But also note that you can use i inside your loop. And notice how it increments accordingly. So that's really, really cool to use the I with it. So this is about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope this wasn't too much for you. If it was, uh, just watch it again. Uh, don't worry, this, 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 this will definitely sink in. It's, it's, it's not bad at all. So, but anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.